Today, we'll be going through various methods of generating rocks in Blender. And apart from that, we'll also learn how to make infinite distribution of rocks like this to create epic scenes like this one. So let's not waste any more time and begin the tutorial. In our default scene, we're going to go ahead and press X to delete our default cube. And we'll first use two inbuilt add-ons to generate different types of rocks. So you can go to your edit preferences and under add-ons, you can actually search for extra objects and just make sure add mesh extra objects is checked. And that's going to be our first add-on. And the second one is your ANT landscape. So you can just search for landscape and you can use this particular add-on. With those two enabled, we'll first start off with the extra object. So under mesh, you get all of these new options and you can see there's a rock generator. With this selected, you can go down over here and just increase the number of rocks and you're going to get different variations every single time because we have use random seed selected. Along with that, you get a few details that you can take care of, such as the deformation roughness, and these are fairly self-explanatory. So that's just one method of creating various rocks that you can just place wherever you want, and they don't have to be rocks, they could be meteors as well. So that's method number one. Method number two is by using the landscape add-on. If you just delete that and press Shift A mesh, you can go all the way down, and you'll find landscape and you can select that. Once you have that selected down here, again, you can expand it and you can change the operator preset to rock. So if you actually select it, you see you get a rock and it's gonna be extremely detailed and you get far more control. So this is good if you just want to create one or two rocks as the main object in your scene. So we might do a scene like that in the future. So stay tuned for that. But you get a lot more control over the actual details of the rock, which you can actually change using the gain and lucanarity down here. And the result that you get from this is generally very, very detailed and it's using fairly subdivided meshes. However, the third method is actually creating rocks yourself and in a method such that you can duplicate it to get a new variation every time. So we'll go to that. We're going to press shift A and mesh. We're going to add in our regular icosphere. And again, in the drop down menu, we're going to increase the subdivisions to something like five, even four works well enough. But once you have the subdivisions down, we're going to go to our modifiers and add in a displace modifier and press new to add in a new texture. So you have to go down to the texture properties over here and change the type from image or movie to Voronoi. When you do this, you see the scale is going to be way too low and that's why you get it this sharp. So you have to go down and change the size and increase it to something fairly large. So once you've increased it, maybe we can increase it to something like one, you'll see that some areas get pinched in quite too much. And that's because in the texture, you can see there are actually very dark spots to remove those. Under the feature weights, you can actually increase the second value. And if you just bring it up a little bit, the blackmost regions start becoming more gray and hence the pinched in regions come out. And this looks fairly good enough. However, the way to actually make this such that it changes every single time you duplicate it is by going back to the modifier properties and changing the coordinates from local to object. And for the object, we press shift A and search for an empty plane axis and just place that wherever you want in the scene. So now when you select your icosphere, you can go ahead and choose the empty as your object. And now every time you press alt D or shift D and just move your asteroid, you get a completely new shape. However, we're not completely done with creating the asteroid yet because this still lacks a lot of details. So to get that, all we're going to do is add in another displace modifier and we're going to press new and go back to the texture properties and make sure you choose displace 001 so that we get texture 001. And this time we're going to change it from Voronoi to clouds. And we can also just decrease the size a little bit and we can go back to the modifiers and reduce the strength as well. So that just gives it a little bit more detail into the rock or the asteroid and makes it look more asteroidy. So let's take this one, let's delete it. And let's take this one and press Alt G to bring it back to the original location. So that looks great, but it's clearly not subdivided enough. So you could add in another subdivision surface, but because you're going to be using many of these, I don't think it's necessary. Instead, you can just go ahead and click Object Shade Smooth and that should be enough. So every time you duplicate this, by pressing Alt D, you just get a new variation. And that's what I really like about this object. Now, there are multiple ways in which you can scatter this object on different surfaces, but for most of them, or most of the methods, you do require the surface initially. I'll go about the pros and cons for each of those methods while actually distributing it. 
So first, let's actually create the plane on which these are going to be scattered. We'll press Shift A and search for a mesh circle and we'll just scale it up quite a bit. Then we'll press 7 to go into the top view and also press Tab to go into the edit mode or you can use the drop down over here. We can press A twice to deselect everything. C for circle select. Just use the scroll wheel to increase the size and just select quite a few of them and then press X, delete vertices. So now you have an arc left. With that arc, you can press two to go to edge select mode or press this button up here. Tap A to select everything and press E to extrude it and just bring it down. And maybe this one, you can scale it down as well, just so that you have some sort of a shape upon which everything is going to be spread. So I think a shape like this is all right. Once you're happy with that, press tab to go back to object mode. And this is what we're going to be spreading our particles over. You can spread it using geometry nodes, using particle systems, or using another scatter object add-on. So to enable the add-on for scattering the objects, you can go to edit preferences and just search for scatter objects and make sure that it's checked. And with that checked, you can select your icosphere, shift select the plane, and then press function F3 or spacebar depending on what your setting is to search for commands. And there you can actually search for scatter objects and you can select it. Once you've selected it, you just draw over where you want the objects to be scattered and you can just draw it and it'll appear. Once you're happy with it, it'll show you exactly how many instances are going to be created. You can press enter and it's going to get scattered by itself. The problem with this is that it remains fairly close to each other and you can't control the spacing between them. And that's why you see you get overlapping situations in regions like this and you can't even change it in any way. However, it's fairly fast to render on your PC and every rock does still follow the original object's location. So each rock is a different variation. The other two methods, each rock is not going to be its own variation. So that might be an advantage or disadvantage of this particular method. So let's go ahead and press X and delete all of them. The second method is selecting this and using geometry nodes to distribute it. So we can go ahead and go to the bottom right and just click and drag to create a new window. We can change this to the geometry node editor, press N to hide the side panel and click new to create a new node tree. Now with this itself, we can just search for a distribute points on faces node and plug that in right there and we can increase the density. Now the best part about using geometry nodes is that you can change this from random to Poisson disk and then just make sure that you have a distance min setup so that it doesn't get too many points cramped within the exact same region and that overlap does not happen. Once you're happy with the distribution, you can go ahead and again, press Shift A and search for an instance on points node and plug that in right here. And for the instance, you can take the icosphere from your outliner and just click and drag it in and then take the geometry and plug that into the instance. When you do that, the size of the instance is are way too large. So you can go ahead and just reduce the scale and there you'll have the distribution of all of your asteroids. However, every single object is going to be the exact same. They no longer follow the distance from this particular object. But in order to randomize that, all you have to do is just randomize the scale and the rotation. So you can search for a random value node and change it from float to vector and just plug this into the rotation. We'll just duplicate it and change it from vector to float. And this is what we'll plug into the scale. But before plugging it in, we'll make the max back to 0 0.03, min maybe 0 0.01 and then plug that into the scale. So with that, it looks fairly randomized and that's one method of creating this. Now for my rotation, we have to increase the max value of the rotation and yeah, that way you get it completely rotated randomly and they look like they're different objects. So that's good enough. The next thing or the next method to distribute these asteroids is removing the geometry node modifier in the modifier stack and instead, going to the particle systems and adding a particle system. For this, we're going to have to change the end frame to one as well, and we can play around with the number. However, this way, to actually control the density, you'll have to actually go to your vertex paint mode and or a weight paint mode and actually paint in areas that you want more distribution to happen. And for that, you require higher geometry. And then you actually have to go to the vertex group and use the maps from that. But apart from that, the good thing about this is that you can actually check rotation and just randomize the rotation and everything over here. And for the render, you can go ahead and change the render as halo to object. And you can choose your icosphere to be the actual object. Object. Along with that, you can increase this randomness and that randomizes everything and you have your particle system. 
Of course, for this, you'll have to switch off show emitter. And in case you're creating an animation, you have to go down to the field weights and switch gravity off all the way to zero. And you'll have to go to velocity and change this normal velocity to zero as well. And you have to increase the lifetime to how many frames you want the animation to be. However, I'm just going to be creating single framed images, so I don't have to bother about that too much. You also have to make sure that your show emitter is switched off not only in the render, but also in your viewport display so that you don't see it. Then you can switch off overlays and that becomes your actual asteroids for whatever asteroid belt you have. The next thing that we have to do is actually create the scene so we can place our camera in the right method. So let's select our camera, press zero on our numpad to go into the camera view. And then I'm going to press N to open the side panel, go to view and select lock camera to view and then press N to hide it again. And then you can just move your camera around how you move any other situation. So you can place it maybe somewhere like this. And once you're happy with the placement, you can go to the camera properties down here, viewport display, increase the passport out all the way to one, and then press shift A and search for the UV sphere. Just grab it on the Y, bring it fairly behind all of these. So then grab it on the X, grab it on the X and just bring it into the actual camera view, scale it up. And this is essentially going to be some planet. So scale it up, press control two. And this is our scene. So now we can start off with the actual texturing. So to texture it, we can change this window from our geometry node editor to the shader editor. Then we can select our icosphere, the one that has been instanced on the plane, which you can see is icosphere 001. Let's go to icosphere 001 and press new. And to actually see all of this, we're going to set all of our animation or render defaults. So just switch on loom, ambient occlusion, screen space reflections, and then come up here, switch off overlays and change it to a viewport shading of render. But apart from that, we also want to zoom in a bit, but because we have the camera locked to view, we can't just zoom in without changing this. So we have to press N, switch this off, and then we can just zoom in to see what we're doing. Now for our icosphere material, we can go ahead and just keep this base color as is or decrease it a little bit to make it a bit darker because asteroids are generally gray. Increase the roughness all the way to one because asteroids are very tough and play around with the normal. So we're just going to search for a noise texture and then we can control shift click it to see what we have. And remember, if you actually want all of these to actually be different, I forgot to mention this, but right now we're using a particle system to get all of these objects here. So just like the previous method of using geometry nodes, they're all actually the same object, but they're just rotated randomly and sized randomly to make it look random. If you want it to not be the same object and you want them to actually be different objects, you can select the circle on which you've placed the particle system, go to the modifiers and click on make instances real. Now what that'll do is make all of them actual objects and immediately they will follow the same coordinates of the empty that you had. And so they're all going to be different. However, it'll also take a lot longer to process. And if you have too many particles in the scene, Blender may crash. So if your laptop or your computer can handle it, definitely go for it if you need it. But if you don't, this is good enough. So now with that, we can continue changing our icosphere's material. So this is what the noise texture currently looks like. What we'll do is we'll search for a color ramp just for more control. We'll bring the black in a little bit and bring the white in a little bit to increase the contrast. And then we'll just increase the scale. And this we can plug into a bump node. So let's search for a bump node and we can plug the color into the height. However, note that over here, everything is actually following the exact same texture, but because they're randomly rotated, you can't really tell. However, if you don't want that, this as well, you can use object coordinates. So we can press Control T with the node wrangler switched on to get the texture coordinate and mapping nodes, and we can change it from generated to object. And for the object, we can again choose the same empty that we had. So we'll have to change the scale accordingly as well. But now each one is actually going to have a completely different bump map to it. Now you can plug this normal into the normal and control shift click the principal BSDF to see what it looks like. Now this might be all right for what you're doing, but I feel like the strength is way too high. So I'm just going to reduce the strength to something like 0 0.2 or 0 0.3. And that is my rocky texture. That's all I'm going to do to create my asteroids. That's zero to go back to my camera view. And this is it. The next thing that I want is the lighting to be proper so that we actually can get some lighting on our sphere that's going to be our planet. So I'm going to choose the light, go to the light properties and change the power down to something like two and change it from a point light to a sun lamp. And now the angle is what's going to give our planet the right lighting. So we want it to have 
light only in this edge over here. I'm going to press zero to go back out, switch on my overlays. And in case your laptop becomes too laggy, mine is still able to handle this. But in case yours can't and you have way too many particles over here, you can actually choose the icosphere, go to the modifiers and just switch off this button for the displace modifiers. And that way your viewport will just become a bit less laggy. <laughs> and at the same time, you'll just see UV spheres instead of the actual rocks or meteors that you generated. So now you can search for your light, which is this, and we have to turn it such that only this edge is lit. So just take this and rotate it all the way to about this direction. So you can actually just find this yellow dot and click and drag it around to get the direction to change. So I think a direction like that is all right, but it is not actually right yet. I don't want to be pointing downwards. I'm going to go to some view like this, click and drag to lift it up so that it's more straight and then press seven to go to my top view. And then again, continue rotating it so that just the edge of my planet is seen. And all right, something like this is fine, but I'm going to have to take my planet and click object shade smooth. The way to texture your planets, I've already taught in a video. You can actually check that up in the top right corner. And for my render, I'm actually just going to use one of the methods created here. I'm not going to go through that again. For the actual background, I'm going to keep it fairly simple. So I'm going to change this from object to world. And the first thing that I'm going to do is reduce the color quite a bit so that it's almost black. Switch off overlay so I can see what we have. Now I'm going to search for a noise texture and I'm going to search for a Boronoi texture. So now I'm just going to bring these two over here. Now both of them have to go through color ramps. So let's press shift A and search for a color ramp. And let's plug this noise texture into the color ramp and then just control shift click to see what we have. Now clearly there's way too much white. So I'm just going to bring the black in quite a bit. I'm going to increase the scale, maybe something like 30. And I'm going to increase the detail to something like 7 or all the way up to 15 and the roughness as well to 0 0.7. And now I'm just going to bring in the black and I'm going to change this white from a white to a very dark color. And I'm going to make it slightly bluish. So a color like that is what it's going to be. And in fact, I'm going to actually reduce the scale to 10. And now plug this into the color of the background and control shift click the background to see what we have. And that's all right for one part of it. The next thing is actually getting some stars in. So that's what our Voronoi texture is going to do. So let's press Shift A and search for a color ramp and plug the distance of the Voronoi into the color ramp and then Control Shift click to actually see what we have. Now we're going to have to flip the color ramp so you can manually do that or just go down to the drop down over here and click flip color ramp. But I'll do it manually. It's all right because I'm going to have to bring this in either way so that we get these circles but clearly the circles are too big to be stars. So we're going to have to increase the scale to something like 100 initially and just see what size you feel fits. So I think 100 is all right, but I'm going to bring this color in even more and that's going to be my stars. So now I just have to mix these two. So let's press shift A and search for a mix node. We're going to have to change it from float to color and from mix, I'm going to actually make it add. So that way the stars just get added on to what was there before. So place this into socket B and the output from the noise texture color ramp to A, increase the factor to one and put the result into the actual background. Then you can control shift click it with the node wrangler switched on to actually get it. And this is your scene. So now what's left for you to do is again, select the icosphere and switch these on so that they actually are present in the render and you get the different variations in your asteroids. And of course, texturing this planet based on the video that was shown, you can check it out. Link will be there in the description. So with that, you can create epic space scenes just like this one. Hopefully that was useful and informative and you learned the different ways in which you can create rocks or asteroids, meteors in Blender. There are a few more methods. So let me know if I've missed out your general favorite method of creating meteors and rocks and comment it down below so that everybody else can learn a few other methods based on their requirements. Until the next video comes out, keep creating and stay creative.